So the waters around the British Isles aren't renowned for holding the most colourful species in the world, but if you do want to brighten up your fishing diet, then the autumn's a great time to do it. A lot of these brighter species live over rough ground, and particularly in the southwest of the country, you can find an abundance of rock marks that give into deep water where you're likely to find some of your more colourful inhabitants. Fish like various species of wrasse, and if you're really lucky, some of the more exotic species like triggerfish. So to target these smaller species, you need to move away from the typical rough ground artillery like heavy rods and reels loaded with extremely strong line. And look to something more like a bass rod, something that casts about three ounces, four ounces. That'll be fine. A reel loaded with braid is a good advantage. That helps you feel the bite quicker and get the tackle off the bottom so the fish doesn't get you in a snag. On the business end, you're generally looking at some sort of paternoster rig. You can take this as far as you want, and I quite like some sort of technical type rigs that I'll show you in a minute. But just a typical three-way swivel rig can do a lot of damage just by changing the diameter of your line and the size of your hooks to favour the fish that you're targeting, along with the bait, of course. So let's talk about the kind of species you can expect to encounter over this kind of ground. Obviously you've got the Ras family, starting with the Ballon, the biggest and boldest of the lot. Then you've got the Corkwing, which is again of common Ras and uh, very obliging. Nice little one that, one of my favourites. Then there's the Cuckoo, which is almost always found in close proximity to deep water and uh, probably not very common in some areas of the country off the shore, more of a boat species. But down here in Cornwall we do have a few venues where you can target them and they're worth doing because they're absolutely gorgeous fish. One thing to be aware of with cuckoos that I do is I tend to um, limit myself to just to catching four or five, six of those because you almost always catch them in deep water and they, they're quite delicate and they don't return very well. So I don't like to think that I'm decimating the population in one area. So I tend to catch a few, then stop on those. But uh, if they're going back well, then fine. But usually I find they, uh, they don't do too well. Then you've got um, the smaller ras species like the gold cine and the rock cook and you're going to need to really step your hooks down for those because they've got very small mouths but they're pretty fish and really cool species in their own right. Of course because you're fishing over rough ground you can expect fish like pollock and coal fish. You can find shoals of fish like pout and poor cod over rough ground quite commonly. You can always catch fish like codlin and school bass too like we've shown in this video. The rough ground is full of surprises so if you're fishing with small baits and the Paternoster rigs, you know, more or less anything could show up, so don't be surprised if it does. For me, the big prizes over this kind of ground are big ballon wrasse and trigger fish. Triggers over rough ground, I find, can be very hit and miss. They're uh, very much here today, gone tomorrow, sort of a thing. But fortunately, you can target them and not really do yourself out of other species as well, so it's always worth doing. They're more a fish that I hope to catch rather than expect to catch and that generally seems to be the way it is for me. If you're really serious about targeting a trigger, I'd advise going for some more well-known trigger venues like certain areas of Chesil Beach and there's certain harbours and piers around the country that are known to hold them. All right, so today I'm off to North Devon to meet up with Ollie and Nat Passwalk. We're gonna go and fish a deep water rock mark that's got good form for triggers and that's the target. But uh, if you know anything about triggers, you know how elusive they can be. So luckily there's a whole host of other colourful critters that live there too. There's all kinds of wrasse and there's pollock, pout, chance of all sorts really off there. So it should be plenty of bites. Looking forward to it. Should be good. What's that, Ollie? So this is my first ever cuckoo. And we got a uh, lovely female here. First ever one I've had from North Devon. Um, yeah, super chuffed for this. An absolutely stunning fish. Lovely little surprise on the light gear, a little codlin. Gave a really good bite and a good old scrap, kept his head down coming in close. 
great fun. Lots of unexpected things coming up today, so uh, hopefully we'll get a few more surprises, eh? <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to take you through a couple of my favourite rigs for this style of fishing. The first is just a basic three-way swivel rig. Got a fairly hefty three-way swivel. 40 pound line going down to a pretty disposable lead. <laughs> and I've just made a little overhand knot in this just so that um, if I do get a fish and it snags me up, hopefully I just lose the lead and not the fish. So the hook, I've got 40 pound line again. But what I've done here is I've made a little figure of eight loop knot and I've just attached uh, onto the swivel with a loop. So it creates a little standoff and that just stops you getting tangled on the line so much. On the business end, I've got a size 1 Chinu hook, which is generally what I'd use with this kind of thing. I'm usually after bow and rass with this sort of rig. And uh, that sort of size hook and pattern is very effective for that. The lengths on this are just arbitrary, but um, what you should do with this is vary the length according to how you find the fish want to feed on the day. If you're fishing like this, fairly off the bottom and you're not getting bites, try lengthening this so the hook's further, the closer to the bottom. You may get snagged a little bit more, but then again, you might catch a lot more fish. So just... Uh, kind of adjust it to how the fish are feeding on the day is the name of the game you just want. So this concoction here is a second rig I want to show you and it's one I call the twisted boom rig. It's um, made out of, uh, it's got two snoods made out of twisted booms and uh, I won't show you how to do that because there's already a really good video out by John Locker on the Fish Locker channel showing you how to make that which I'll link in the description for you. And uh, the twisted booms, what I do is I trap a swivel in the eye of the boom so that enables me to use um, much finer hook lengths on here. I can, I can vary this depending on what I want to do. This is 25 pound hook length at the moment. Got a little float bead, got a size two Camazan Aberdeen, uh, yeah, Camazan Aberdeen short shank. It's what I tend to use for cuckoos and that sort of thing. Main body of the rig is 40 pound line. And also I've got uh, this little guy here, which is a Tronix Pro rig float. And that helps it, the rig stand off a little bit more in the water. It's got uh, quite a lot of buoyant aspects to it. So it tends to stand a little bit more vertical in the water than if it wasn't there, if the rig float wasn't there at all. And what that does, it accomplishes two things for you. It uh, produces a lot of flutter in your baits, and it also stops you getting snagged as much. Because uh, I, I tend to fish this rig a little bit further out, like I, I will actually cast this rig, and that's why I've, uh, I've got uh, a weak link at the bottom. And what I tend to use this rig for is um, smaller species, Typically cuckoo wrasse, this is my favourite rig for cuckoos, uh, but I've, I will use it for things like black bream as well over rough ground, that sort of thing. And I've also caught quite a few triggers with this rig, so um, it's good for those sort of applications. Uh, it's, where it comes into its own is if you want to fish a bait with a lot of movement, but you want to stay in the same area. And I'll give you an example of when that's been uh, an instance where that's been useful to me. Is um, One time I was fishing for triggers and I started out with the float and um, I found a little area where there seemed to be triggers. I had one out and uh, every time I passed through there, I get, got a bite or two, but the tide was pushing the float through far too quickly. Uh, so I wasn't in the sort of kill zone for very long. So what I did was I changed to this rig and um, managed to nail down the spot where they were feeding. I, I, I had quite a few that day, whereas if I'd stuck with the float, I probably would have only had a two or three more maybe. So uh, that's, that's a, an instance where this rig has really come into its own. Fantastic little rig, cool lots of fish on this. I feel it. That, that. Some wrasse. <laughs> Lovely wrasse bass. <laughs> Bit of a surprise, eh? Yeah. Wrass bass. Without <laughs> <laughs> the teeth. <laughs> so this is the kind of rod and reel that I suggest for this style of fishing. Um, this is a bass rod, this is a Coniflex Bass Bandit, an old model. It's what I use for all my gilt head fishing and that sort of thing, but it, it doubles great for this kind of work. And uh, this is the same reel that I use for, for gilt heading too. It's a Shimano Bait Runner 6000 OC. Although in this case, over rough ground, I suggest using braid. This is 30 pound Power Pro on here. And I've got a 30 pound sort of rubbing leader on there as well, which uh, helps with 
abrasion resistance and landing fish. This sort of outfit is really good for the general style that we're talking about today. So bait wise what should you be using? If you're after the wrasse and by that I mean the balans, the cork wings and the smaller ones then uh, ragworm is pretty much king for that style of fishing. If you want the larger balan wrasse then a small hardback crab is, is hard to beat for that. Um, if you're specifically targeting the cuckoo wrasse then I would move on to fresh mackerel as that is a bait that they will seek out whereas other wrasses tend to be slower on it so you're more specifically targeting the cuckoo with the fresh mackerel. Same for trigger fish as well, fresh mackerel is a great bait for triggers and um, it, it will tend to single them out over say casting out a lump of peeler crab. If you cast a bit of peeler crab out in an area where old uh, balan wrasse are living then rubber lips is going to get there far before the triggers do so you, you kind of like uh, want to hide into nothing there unless there's a whole nest of triggers. But um, as far as other baits go Squid strip works really well for black bream and uh, coochers will take it as well. But um, for me, the mainstay of my approach over this kind of ground is ragworm, fresh mackerel, and if I'm targeting the bigger, bigger wrasse, then uh, hardback crab. You can't really go wrong with those three baits. colours on his fins, they're like traffic lights. <laughs> Blue, red and then green. Lovely motley. Mm. Fish of the day, Ollie. Yeah, it's the biggest of the day, biggest pouting. Getting plagued by these. It's coming a bit of a nuisance, but when they're this size, very nice to see. No. The problem. Yeah, nice little surprise really on the worm baits. Not what we're targeting today, but uh, yeah, beautiful looking cards, cobbling like this. Always happy to catch. So that's the end of a nice session. We've had uh, nine different species. We've had conger, pout, poor cod, pollock, cod, balan wrasse, cork ring wrasse, tom pot blenny, and cuckoo wrasse as well. So Ollie's first ever cuckoo wrasse, so that was a good turnout for the books. So it's been a good selection of colourful little species and uh, great fun fishing. And a nice, nice new venue for me, a deep water venue. Not too much lost gear as well, which is nice. The weather's been great. We've caught a nice variety of fish, so uh, can't be disappointed with that. Even if we didn't get a trigger fish, there's always next time. So assuming you've made it this far, I bet some of the specimen anglers out there among you are like, oh, catching a bag of small colourful fish sounds alike, but where's the sport? And yeah, that's a valid criticism, but for me, this style of fishing is all about fun. It's about going back to being a kid again. It's a lucky dip every time you cast in, you don't know what species you're going to catch, you don't know what colour it's going to be, how big, could be something totally crazy that you've never even seen before. That's the beauty of this style. If you want the sport, it is there, you can target the big bound and rash and the triggers and they'll pull your string all day long, but uh, the real beauty of this for me is that sense of wonderment when you catch these colourful, odd fish. It's great fun and it's just like being a kid again sometimes and that's what I really like about it. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more regular, high quality sea fishing content. Till next time, cheers.